welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany Bundles and today's video is going to be a questions and answers video. I'm going to be scrolling through my comments and answering questions in my comments. I also did a poll about a week ago and I asked you all to um, poll if you have already sent in your questions to my email address or if you don't have any questions to send in. And I got about five or six emails from that poll. So I'm gonna be doing another dedicated video for that specific question and answers poll that I did last week. However, like I mentioned today, I'm gonna to be scrolling down in my YouTube studio app and um, pretty much just going over different questions and answering the questions on camera here. I did respond back to the questions um, in my comments as well. So if you did ask any of these questions, um, just know that I did reply back to you and I'm just going to do a video going over the questions like I mentioned in case anyone else has similar questions. So if you are interested, be sure to give the video a big thumbs up. Please make sure that you are subscribed and let's get right into it. So the first question is, hey Brittany, what is the max term for working capital loans? Um, I did do a video going over PayPal working capital. PayPal does offer loans and they also offer working capital. The working capital is more so like a um, cash advance where if your store does qualify, then you can go ahead and choose from three different offers. Um, so for example, then you may have an offer of $2,000, $4,000, $5, and $5,000 to choose from. And if you choose the option for uh, $2,000, then it may be like 10% of your sales that are going to be um, taken from PayPal to repay back the amount that you uh, were advanced. If you take the $4,000, it may be 20%. If you take the 5,000, it may be 25% of your sales. Um, I do recommend using PayPal as a uh, merchant for your business. I've used PayPal as a merchant for my business for many years at this point. Um, PayPal has just been the most consistent and fair when it comes to any, any issues um, as regarding chargebacks or regarding disputes. PayPal has been really fair, uh, like I mentioned in some other videos. There are some companies that are not really fair. They either work on the side of the merchant or they work on the side of the business. Um, PayPal is really fair, like I mentioned. So they collect information from the merchant. So you're, you know, if you're conducting business as the merchant or as the, um, you know, business owner. And they also collect information from your customers and clients and they do a thorough investigation that doesn't take too long. So it's very efficient. And they normally, from my experience, they, they have a fair resolution. Um, PayPal also offers different options. Like I mentioned, PayPal working capital, if you are using PayPal. So if you do want uh, additional spending power for your business, but you don't wanna take out a loan, they do have options available, like I just mentioned with the K PayPal working capital. Um, now the question was, hey Brittany, what is the max term for working capital loans? And it says five years, question mark. Because this video was regarding PayPal working capital and it was not on the PayPal um, loans, it was actually on the PayPal advances. Um, I did do some research and it uh, what I was able to find is it says PayPal working capital um, term length max 18 months. So I'm not sure 100% if the 18 months is for the PayPal loans or if it's for the PayPal working capital, but I'm pretty sure that it is for the PayPal working capital. If you do want to verify that, I would recommend doing additional research or reaching out to PayPal. PayPal does have a phenomenal customer service. Uh, so you are able to give them a call during the day and get most of your questions, if not all of your questions answered. So that question, that is that right there. Um, I also wanna say this, I did a poll on my community tab asking um, you all to weigh in on your experience using Shopify Payments, which is another merchant. And I'm gonna be doing a video on that as well. I get questions constantly asking, which payment merchant do I recommend going with? And although you know it's great to offer many options for your customers and clients, like I've mentioned in some other videos, you do wanna make sure that you're being very thorough and making sure that when you do bring on another merchant for your business, that it's going to be in your best interest because the last thing that you want is to receive sales and always have to look over your shoulder to wonder if someone's going to uh, initiate a dispute or a chargeback. And if you're going to be able to win the chargeback, even if the chargeback should be sustained in your eyes and if you did everything right, 
a lot of times when you are working with other payment merchants and that customer or client use the credit card, that credit card company nine times out of 10 is going to work for their customer who is your customer as well. So if the customer is saying, hey, I didn't order this or hey, I don't remember ordering this or something like that, nine times out of 10, uh, there's a, a great chance that you will have to sustain and eat that charge back. So we'll talk about that in some other videos and I'll go over the information that I received from polls and also reaching out to other companies that have used um, different payment merchants and, and we'll go over that too. Um, I have another question. There's a national tire and battery that shut down and I wanna buy the building and reopen for the same service with a different name. There's no info there. How can I obtain that building and lots? Honestly, you are going to have to find out some information. You're going to need to know who owns that building, who owns that lot in order to purchase. If there's no sign there, if there's no information, I would do research. I would probably get on Google. Um, I'm sure there's other ways that you can find out who owns the building, but um, I mean, that's unfortunately, you are gonna have to find that out. Uh, as far as how you go about it, what I would do, like I mentioned, I would start with Google. I would try to find out, Google the, the address, I would Google the business name. And a lot of times when you do Google that information, it may have some information regarding the landlord or regarding the owner of the property or regarding where that business moved. And a lot of times if you call the business, even if they relocate it, they will give you information as to who owned that lot and how you can go about getting more information for purchase or for rental opportunities. So that's what I would do. Um, let's see, I have some comments regarding my nails. If you do want to um, hear comments regarding my nails or if you want me to go over questions that I have here on the YouTube Studio app under my videos in regards to my nails, I'm gonna go ahead and link my latest What's On My Nails video right below this video. So be sure to check that out if you are interested in those um, like questions and also statements. And also if you want to watch what's on my nails, click the link down below because I'm really not going to go over too many nail questions in this video. If any, I don't think I'm gonna go over any nail questions. Um, okay. I have a question. Hi, do you still offer drop shipping? The answer is yes, drop shipping is still being offered. If you are interested in starting drop shipping or joining drop shipping and starting your own hair business or continuing your hair business, or if you're, um, let's say you are a stylist and you're looking for a reputable vendor um, that you can order hair through, I mean, drop shipping is also an option for you as well. So if you are interested in drop shipping, I'll leave a link below this video as well. Be sure to click that link. You can read up on more information. You can also chat me there on the website if you have any questions. And then you can also um, give me a text or an email. I'm more than happy to help. But I'll uh, go ahead and like I said, that link will be down below for drop shipping if you are interested. And again, yes, I still do offer drop shipping and I also offer wholesale options. Um, and drop shipping is for um, hair extensions, so bundles, closures, frontals, and the same with wholesale uh, hair extensions in bulk, bundles, closures, and frontals. I have a comment under my video uh, titled, you're scared of starting a business. I'm scared of you not starting a business. Here's why. And the comment says, very smart perspective. Thank you. And I just want to tell you, thank you. Thank you for leaving that comment. Um, I am more so on the line with not allowing fear to overcome you, especially if the fear is going to hold you back. Um, a lot of times we allow fear and doubt to stop us from moving forward with the business plans and goals that we already have in our heart and on our mind. And God put unique gifts inside of all of us. And if we can find a way to use those gifts daily and actually turn a career into what God has already placed into you, that's phenomenal in my opinion. So there's a lot of you know, worries on both ends, you know, uh, in, re in regards to should I start a business or should I not? And um, honestly, like I mentioned in the title, you may be scared of not starting it or you may be scared of starting a business, but I am scared of not starting one. Even if you have a nine to five, I'm a big advocate of not putting all of your eggs in one basket. I just don't believe in doing that. Anything can happen to your nine to five. Honestly, anything can happen to your business. So a business is not even the only solution that I recommend having if you are working towards financial stability. I definitely recommend you having multiple streams 
And I do have videos on this channel where I go over how I make mobile money, which is mo uh, money on the go, how I'm able to um, receive income from different streams. And that is so important because if any of my businesses slow down, for example, if I don't get any hair sales for an entire month, I still need to be able to pay my bills. I still need to be able to feed my children. Life still goes on. So just having that mentality constantly keeps me looking for different avenues and different options for expansion and also for uh, additional revenue. So yes, if you are nervous and scared of starting your business, I, I would say that um, you're entitled to your feelings and it's, it's honestly a common feeling, it's, it's normal. But what are you going to do with that feeling? Are you going to allow it to hold you back or are you going to learn how to push through your fear and still accomplish what it is you need to accomplish? Um, so let's see. The next question is, I wanted to start. Okay, the next question is, I wanted to start a hair business on Etsy and eBay. Is that a good idea versus my own website? And before I answer, I do have another, I, I reply back to the comment, but I have another comment that says, thanks, I did sign up for your dropshipping program as well. I signed up yesterday, thanks again. I think, I'm just gonna reply back to this. Okay. Um, So let me say that, let me, let me just explain this. Um, there is not a one size fits all for business. And I say this very, very frequently. I almost lost my balance, sorry about that. But I say this very frequently in a lot of videos. There's not a one size fits all. I wish, sometimes I wish there was. I wish there was just like a, a, a certain code that everyone can go down so that everyone can reach success the same way so that you know no one's left behind everyone just has the blueprint but honestly um you know it, it, that wouldn't be any fun and it really wouldn't challenge us to grow there are some businesses that sell strictly on instagram there are some businesses that sell strictly on ebay some that sell strictly on shopify and there are others that sell on multiple platforms what i would recommend is i would recommend following your heart if you are wanting to start on ebay start on ebay do I recommend you only limiting yourself to eBay? I don't. I do believe that having a website has so many benefits. For example, website is going to give you the right website. Not all websites work the same and not all uh, e-commerce platforms have the same benefits. But I'm gonna share experiences um, that I have ex you know, gone through using Shopify. So if you are an e-commerce business and if you are looking for a good e-commerce platform to transition to or to start on, I definitely recommend Shopify. You can go ahead and click the link below this video. There is a Shopify link as well. Choose the plan that works best for you and there may even be a free trial, but you have to click that link to see. But Shopify gives you so many analytics, like I say in so many videos. Analytics are important because it shows you exactly where your business is at, what's going on, and it gives you a guide of how to create a plan to move forward strategically. There's always ways to move forward with your plan, but that doesn't mean that you're moving forward with strategy. A lot of times I see business owners moving forward blind because they really don't know where they're at and they really don't know what to, to do next. They know that they haven't gotten any orders today. They know that they didn't get as many orders as they wanted last month. They know how many people have come to their website, but they don't know where the traffic is coming from. Um, they don't know if it's coming from Instagram or Facebook. They don't know how many sales have contributed from their Facebook post versus their Instagram post, for an example, or their Twitter post, or even YouTube videos. They don't know the percentage of their um, abandoned car emails or even um, a full picture of what's actually being left in their abandoned carts. There are some people that are like, hey, I have an abandoned cart, it shows me, but I don't have the email and the phone number to even reach back out to this person. I mean, I don't know who this person is. I have not used every e-commerce site. I've only used GoDaddy. I've used um, Shopify. I've played around a little bit with Wix and with Big Cartel. But from my experience, Shopify has been hands down the best platform for analytics and for customization on the website as far as adding different apps and implementing different um, options and bells and whistles and really useful tools 
to continue to, you know, to assist with the continuation of growing your business. So um, to answer that question, you can sell on eBay and Etsy. That's fine. But I do recommend having a website, not just for the analytics. The analytics is an important part, but also so that you can streamline your orders and you can also begin to grow a community. For example, with the website, you have a option, a higher option or a higher chance, let me say it that way, of building your mailing list versus going on eBay, telling your customers and clients, hey, go over to eBay and shop. And then if you want to join my mailing list, go over here and click this link to Survey Monkey. And then if you want to go ahead and, and shop someplace else, go ahead and click on my Etsy link. Now, people may do that, but it's, just, it's a more streamlined, convenient approach to have a website so that if they go to the website, they can go ahead and enroll in your mailing list. They can learn more about your business. People tend to purchase from people that they feel like they can relate to, people that they feel have integrity, good customer service. And so that's why I talk a lot in my videos about having an about page, about getting a professional biography written for you. And if you are looking for a professional biography service to go on your about page or a professional biography um, to go on your about page, excuse me, be sure to reach out to me. I do offer those services as well, and I'd be more than happy to help. Um, but it offers a more streamlined experience for your customers and clients. And not only that, but it gives you analytics so that you can see if what you're doing is actually get, getting the results that you're looking to get. So for example, if you're posting your Etsy link or your eBay link and <clears throat> you notice that sales increase, but you're not knowing, okay, are, are they increasing because I'm posting on Facebook, Instagram? And that's why a lot of times people rely on the likes. But that's not giving you accurate information because I don't have, there are some months I get less than two likes on a post, but then I can go to my Shopify store and see that I've made close to $1,000 that week. Again, two likes, $1,000 off of posting. And so it lets me know what I'm doing is still being valid because I can still see the results. Now, there are times where you post and you may not see an immediate result. You have to keep in mind, you know, how long you've been in business, how consistent you've been. I've been in business since 2013. So we don't want to always even, um, I'll just put that out there. You know, we, we don't want to get into the habit of comparing our businesses with others because again, everyone is at a different place in their business, whether you want to admit that or not, everybody is. And so it's very, very um, wise to not compare yourself, but take the information that's going to be relevant for your business and also add your spin on it and ultimately do what it is you feel like it, you know, you should do for your business. So to answer that question, um, I do recommend you, if you'd like, starting off using both. However, I do strongly recommend going to a website for the best results. Again, there are multiple companies out there that I have seen that have been um, successful and that are still successful selling outside of having a website. So it can happen. You don't have to have a website to make consistent sales. However, if you're asking my opinion, I do recommend having a website. There's just too many benefits with having a website to ignore, um, in my opinion or to do without. Again, it can work, but I do recommend you having one. Um, the next question is, question, I integrated ShopPay to my website. Uh, if you are wondering what ShopPay is, I did a video on what is ShopPay. So if you do want to check that out, be sure to do that. Just go to um, the YouTube search and type in ShopPay Brittany Bundles and that video should pop up. But um, shop pay is pretty much like a buy now, pay later option. And with the buy now, pay later option, it um, gives the store the funds up front, like I believe in one to three business days or one to five business days. And then the customer or client is um, obligated to make those payments back. So um, the question is, I integrated shop pay to my website. I have it set up that um, anyone who pays with a charge like normal and not using Shopify, I get a payout once a week with all of my sales. But now that I've integrated Shopify, every single individual order that is placed with Shopify gets deposited into my bank account individually. Is there a way I can make the payouts only weekly, not every single order? And to be honest, I don't believe so. It's the same way um, kind of with 
uh, Sezzle. Sezzle is the buy now, pay later option that I use on my website. So if you are interested in using Sezzle, there's a link below this video too. Go ahead and click that link and then you can apply to use Sezzle for your store. Um, but Sezzle is the same way. So every time I get a Sezzle order, um, there's different. There's two different plans on Sezzle. So I can choose to have my funds holding for a longer period, but I choose to have my funds withdrawn in three business days uh, and deposit it to my bank account directly. So every order that I get, uh, it, it's like on an individual basis. So for example, if I get an order today for $100 through Sezzle and then tomorrow an order for $100 through Sezzle um, and then the next day another order for $100 through Sezzle, I'm not gonna get that $300 at the end of the week on the same day. Um, the funds would be held even individually for three business days. So I'll get that first payout first of 100. And then shortly after that, I'll get the second payout of 100 and then the third payout of 100. So if you know, if there's a way that you can change um, shop pay and have your payouts deposited every week, um, please let us know, leave a comment down below. But to my knowledge, I don't believe there is a way to do that. I do believe that it goes on an individual order basis. Um, the next question is, how did you get started in motivational speaking? Uh, motivational speaking is something that I enjoy doing. Um, I, I was very nervous when I first started doing it. Um, I just had to learn how to work through my fear. And sometimes I even get nervous talking about it. That's why you can kind of hear me saying, um, um, um. Uh, there are some things that I do still need to work on, just like with anyone. Uh, I still definitely want to perfect my motivational speaking skills and my um, just communication skills all around. However, to answer that question, I um, initially would send out different, um, like, I would send out different, I don't want to say offers, but I would pretty much like sell myself to different places. So I would contact different places and let them know uh, what I did, who I am, and what my focus would be in speaking to their organization or to their school. And uh, some people will go ahead and, and reply back and tell me yes, you know, or no thank you, or we'll keep your information on file in case we are looking for someone to talk about this. And then uh, I started getting offers from people that would email me or write me in or watch a video maybe or hear you know, something about what I'm doing and they would reach out to me and ask me if I wanted to be a guest on their radio show or ask me if I wanted to be a guest uh, on their, their um, podcast or if I wanted to be a guest virtually for their school or in person for their school or through their organization. So that's how I started by pretty much putting myself out there and sending different email offers, letting organizations and schools know who I was, what I've done, and what I am interested in talking about. Because a lot of times when you're wanting to do something, uh, we, have, we, have, we, we have reservations. And like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, we can allow those reservations and fears to dictate our life, or we can find a way to push past and once you push past the reservations and fears, you, you have to ask yourself, well, how am I going to get what I want? How am I going to get this lifestyle of doing what it is I want to do? What do I do now? So I could have sat there and just waited for someone to reach out, but I decided to be proactive and put myself out there. So if you are wanting to get into motivational speaking, there are a lot of people that are mo motivational speaking. There are a lot of life coaches but please don't let that intimidate you. There are a lot of people selling hair, but please don't let that intimidate you. Whatever gift you have, whatever is inside of your heart, you deserve to be able to get that out. You deserve to be able to live in your um, skill set, your gifts, and be fulfilled doing so. And so I'm just here to remind everyone, you know, as a living testimony, that if you put yourself out there enough times, you may get 10 no's but that gets you closer to the yes. And you don't need a thousand yeses to be able to showcase your skills and your gifts and for someone else to see your potential and be able to pass that information along so that you can continue public speaking or motivational speaking or whatever industry you're in. So that's how I got started motivational speaking. Initially, like I said, pushing myself out there and then I started getting different requests from different organizations in schools and different radio shows and podcasts to be featured on their show talking about what it is they wanted me to talk about and also what I wanted to talk about. Um, 
let's see. What are some different questions? I, I'm gonna probably go over one more question because I don't want the video to be, it's gonna be long, but I don't want it to be super, super long. Um, let's see. I just answered that question. That was another shop pay question. Okay, so the next question is, do you recommend inventory for a Black Friday sale? Again, like I mentioned, I do offer hair extensions and I do create videos on this channel in regards to different business tips that you can use for your hair business or for another business because a lot of times the fundamentals in my sales approach is the same. Um, it's it's kind of universal. So. Uh, like I said, the foundation is the same, but you can definitely go ahead and put your spin on it, take some things out, put some things in, ultimately do what works best for you. But to answer that question, yes, I do recommend having inventory on hand for Black Friday. Do you have to have inventory on hand? No. There are other options such as drop shipping. Uh, like I mentioned a minute ago, I do offer drop shipping services. So if you are interested in drop shipping hair extensions, be sure to check out the link below this video. But there are other ways around offering um or having hair on hand they're having hair on hand is just not an option for some businesses some companies do not have the spending power to invest in having hair on hand at this point and that's why one of the reasons why i created my ebook called drop shipping now wholesale later and it pretty much explains how to transition your business from drop shipping to buying in bulk where you receive the largest profit and so everyone has to start someplace if you can have hair on hand Yes, I would recommend having hair on hand. And the reason is because if you do receive an order, there are some people that are just impatient and they just are not going to wait. If you don't have the hair, they're going to go to another company. You can have the best customer service. You can have the best quality hair. But if they need hair like today and you don't have the hair in stock, they will more than likely go to someplace else. Now, there's ways that I can go over with you in some other videos on how to... Um, still keep orders like that. So there are gonna be some people that are like, no, I need my hair today, I need my hair today. And there's ways to talk to them and build a relationship and figure out what you can do. So, okay, you know, I know you need the hair today. I'm unable to fulfill this order today, but if you are patient with me, I may be able to go ahead and take $15 off your order if you are able to wait until Wednesday or something like that. Or, you know, I know that you need the hair today, but let's say next time if you come to me, um, you know, order about three days in advance. And for the inconvenience of me not having the hair in stock, I'll go ahead and take $20 off the order. And not saying you have to always lead with a discount because I don't believe that either. I'm just giving some examples. But there are ways to use those experiences as your, or not even use those experience as um a tool, but there, there is a way to capitalize off of those experiences still. There's always opportunity if you look deep enough. Um, however, uh, if you don't have hair on hand, like I said, it, it's not the end of the world, but if you can have hair on hand just for those orders that are going to want the hair like today, or for those um, clients or customers that may be needing their hair done because they're going right up the street to get their hair done at the salon and they don't want to go to a a beauty supply store, they want to actually just purchase some good quality hair, you may lose out on those sales if you don't have hair on hand. And then also, there are some people that may come to you and they may not want to buy right now, but they may want to see what the hair looks like so that they can place an order when you do do your Black Friday sale. So it's also beneficial to have some hair on hand. Um, even if you purchase like my sample kit where you have four different full 12 inch bundles to post on social media and also to showcase the people in person, that would be a benefit in being able to solidify some of those sales where your customers or clients may feel iffy because they're unable to actually see the product and action that you're offering. So that is my answer to that question. Again, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I am gonna be doing a whole nother Q&A video going over the answers to the questions that you did email in. So be sure to stay tuned for that video. Turn your post notifications on if they're not already, please. Make sure that you are subscribed and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.